Hey everyone, Kelsey here from Premiere Gala, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with the sound cue software from Pro Sound Effects. First, let's show you how to search for a sound in the sound cue library and send it to the timeline in your editing software. So here in Premiere Pro, I have this underwater seal clip and I want to add some underwater bubble sounds. To do that, we're going to go into the sound cue app and I'm going to search for bubbles to see if I can find a nice underwater sound. Let's play this one. All right, I think that sounds pretty good so we can try it out in Premiere Pro. But before we send it to Premiere, you need to make sure that the send to in the lower bottom right is set to Premiere Pro. And to send it, you can click on this green arrow icon or you can just press S on your keyboard, the shortcut, and it will prepare the clip and it will send it directly into your timeline. And SoundCue, it creates a new audio track automatically. So that way, if you have any clips in your timeline, it won't overlap. So we can just move this clip up. Also, a really cool thing that SoundCue does is when you go into your finder, the same file path as your project file, it will create a folder called sound cue and it will import that sound file here so everything stays connected. If you ever want to change this file path, you can go back to sound cue and from the bottom lower right, you can click here and you can change the transfer path automatic automatically sets it to the same path as your project file for Premiere Pro, but you can click on set path here and you can change it to any location on your hard drive. Also, SoundQ has a really cool new auto translation feature in beta. So if you search for anything in a different language, you'll see the results translated. So for example, up here in the search results, if I search for agua, water in Spanish, you'll get a bunch of results in water, so it's automatically translated. I'm gonna go back to the original search bubbles and go to that original sound effect here. And I wanna show you how to make a selection. So if you only wanna import one part of this sound effect, you can just click on the waveform and drag it out to just make a selection. So you have your in point and your out point. You can also add fade ins and fade outs to your selection. So if you hover over this handle, you can click on this blue icon and drag it in to create a fade in. And you can do the same to the other handle to fade out. You can also choose to do this in your editing software. So if you don't want to have the fade in fade outs baked in, when you send it to Premiere Pro, you can just drag this back to the handle like so. Another thing that you can do is you can reverse the sound. So if we click on reverse, and press play, you can press the space bar to play and pause. It'll go backwards instead of playing forwards. You can also adjust the volume. So if you want it to be louder, we can bring up the decibels by moving to the right or lowering it down. And you can get precision just by double clicking if you want it to be exactly 11. Also, you can speed it up. So if you want it to be higher in pitch, we can just move the slider to the right or we can slow it down so it'll be lower. And let's just play it back to see how it sounds at a lower pitch. All right, so you can make those effects changes right here inside of SoundCue, and then you can press S just to send that newly edited clip into Premiere Pro, and you'll notice again, it imports again here on Audio Track 4, and you can bring this up and then play around with the sound design. A quick tip for you, if you want to reset the volume and the speed, you can option click or alt click on the volume to set it back to the default settings. And if you want to bring the reverse back, you can just click that button so that way it'll play forwards again. In addition to Premiere Pro, you can also send it to other software or other locations. So if you go to send to and you click on Adobe Premiere, we can send it to the Pro Tools timeline the Reaper timeline, and you can also do drag and drop so it will save to your downloads and you can drag and drop it into another software. You can also save it directly to any folder on your disk. So now I wanna tell you about the collections in the left-hand panel here. There's SoundCube sound effects and the SoundCube music library. With the SoundCube plan, you'll get unlimited access to both the sound effects and the music library. And you'll know that you will get unlimited access by the cloud icon next to each of the sound files. So even if you're just on the free tier of SoundCube, the 
library will be smaller, but you'll still have unlimited access. So if you want to refine your search to just one collection, you can just click on that collection and you'll only be searching within that collection. If you want to add multiple collections, you can press shift and select the last collection, for example, and it will search within all of them. You can also disable certain collections that you don't want to select just by clicking on this icon. And when it's faded, it's not going to search in those collections. You can also create your own customized collections that behave kind of like your own playlist. So up here, I can click on add new and let's rename this to favorites. And what's really cool is you can click on this ellipsis and you can change the color and you can change the icon. So if we want it to be this check mark for favorites, I like that. We can also nest another collection inside of this. So I can click on add new and I will call this underwater because I want to make a collection of underwater sounds. And I can just click and move this underneath favorites. And now if we open this up, you'll see underwater here. And once again, I'll put a little anchor here icon. So that way I know it's underwater. Another thing that we can do is set the target here. And if I want to add these bubble sound effects to the underwater collection that I just made, I'm going to press shift and select the last waveform sound effect here. So all of them are selected, press the space bar to stop the plane. And then you can press T for target to send them directly to the underwater playlist. You can also drag and drop the sounds directly into the collection to add sounds to your custom collections. You can also import your own personal sound effects libraries into SoundCube to make it easy to search for them and import them into your editing software. If you click on this icon here, I can just drag and drop it here. And here you can add it to an existing collection or you can create a new collection. For example, you can call it my sound effects and then you can hit import. And now we can go to the My Sound Effects collection that we just created. We'll also disable the bubble search. And now all of these sound effects have this little laptop icon next to it. And that just means it's locally indexed and it's not in the cloud part of the SoundQ library, for example. You can also just drag and drop local files from your computer straight into a new or existing collection rather than going through that import panel process. And there's a couple more collections here I want to mention. There's free sound. So if we click on that, it has a database of the CC0, which is a public domain dedication license. So this is just an easier way for you to browse them here and send them directly to your editing software. And below the free sound, you'll find the pro sound effects. And you can open this up and you can see all the collections here. And pro sound effects is the company that created SoundQ. And the library here in pro sound effects has over 800,000 sounds that you can use use and it goes beyond the sound cue library and you need to purchase credits to be able to download a perpetual lifetime license to use these sound effects. So think of this as kind of your sonic safety net. If you can't find anything in sound cue or free sound, you can go here and purchase credits. And to add credits to your account, you can go up to your account in the upper right corner and just hover over to add credits. Also, if you've made any purchases from Pro Sound Effects, if you go to the purchases collections, all of your purchases will appear right here. And lastly, I want to show you a few UI user interface features that will help you get oriented in SoundQ. So if you want to collapse the collections panel to create more space, you can click on this icon right here to close it and click it again to bring it back. You can also click the I to close the file info panel and click it again to bring it back. You can also click on this icon to import local files like I showed you before. Also from file info and collections, you'll find this little icon that's a pop out. So if you click on this, you can actually pop out the panel to separate it from the rest of the software, just like you can do in Premiere Pro. And to bring it back, you can just select this icon. So I'm just going to close the collections panel and the file info panel because I want to show you how to reorder the metadata. So for example, if I want to bring over the sample rate closer here, I can just click on that column and bring it over. 
Probably duration too is important. Description, if you want to bring that to the front. So you can just move these columns around depending on your own preference. You can also change the size of the waveform at the bottom. So down here at this line, we can hover and you'll get this kind of double arrow. If you click and drag this up, you can make it bigger if you want to see it in a more bigger view. You can also go over here and you can increase the magnification to increase the size of the actual waveform. And you can also option click or alt click to bring it back to the default. So that's all there is to the getting started video here. It was a pleasure to guide you through all of the user interface and I think the SoundQ team has done an excellent job. If you need further help with SoundQ, you can check out the description box below for a link to the SoundQ user guide. That's all for this video and happy editing.